أشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي محمد صلى الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise be to Allah the king of the world the master of the day of judgment I bear witness no one is worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the last and greatest uh, messenger uh, as the sister said, I attended FIU between 1997 and 2001. And uh, this place means a lot to me. And uh, every time I come back here, uh, a lot of memories uh, cross. Too many good ones, too many bad ones. Uh, too many hard exams, huh? but very good grades. Try all the time. Uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, I appreciate the invitation uh, tonight. Uh, just because of the time, we're gonna uh, we have a little long lecture. I try to make it as short as possible because I already got a couple of messages that uh, people are hungry. So, so I have to finish quick. Uh, so Islam and science. It's very important to understand that uh, usually, uh, I believe in the West there is a war on religion. And this has been happening for the last few decades. Trying to make religion sound like uh, something that is, that is old. People say, for example, they pray. Uh, people are to say they attend the uh, religious institution, masjid, mosque, church. Even there is a change in terminology. And people in the West do not pray anymore. People meditate. They even exchange term, terms to make it sound more uh, acceptable and to make people more comfortable with it. Just with too many uh, other things that they have changed the, the terms and they continue to do that. Uh, post-traumatic uh, syndrome now it used to be called the uh, bombshell uh, uh, all these things alcohol is called spirits uh, you know uh, uh, abortion is called uh, family planning stuff like that and the religion secular world and that is what they identify themselves making it sound like religion is a disease the bottom line religion is a disease or religion is something personal something that you practice in your house you practice in your in your uh, mosque church temple synagogue wherever but outside don't talk about that outside on the streets religion has no place uh, they make it sound religion is so backward. Religion does not address contemporary current issues. Religion doesn't have solution for our problems. Which is something that they have proved over the years that they are wrong. Because they didn't come up with the I mean the alternative that they had come, with, come up with Gaddafi is made in Europe. Gaddafi is made in the West. Yes, he's an Arab tyrant. Huh? He's a Muslim tyrant, as he identifies himself. But at the end, all these years, he's been supported by the West. The West that calls for human rights, and the West that calls for equality, and the West calls for, uh, you know, for the freedom to do whatever you want, as they say. He's made and he's supported by the West. And now the West are the first people to sell him out. As France today, Sarkozy and France, the French government, they said, that's it, we, and the Portuguese as well, we don't accept Gaddafi to be the president of Libya. But two months ago, they used to. 
two months ago, the man has more over 130 billion dollars in his bank accounts with his kids. The same before him, Zain al-Din, Zain al-Abidin, the one before him, or Husni Mubarak in between. countries, huh? Qaddafi and Mubarak, and they're also interested, personal interests. The people are what? Whether the people, the majority of people, the mainstream in the West or in the East, people are lost. People are the ones who have to pay. Huh? People are the, the ones who have to deal with the consequences. People are the ones who suffer. And that is, I believe personally, that is when they decided to tell us and to convince people where most people fell for it that religion is not something good. Religion is an old style fashion. Today there are new stuff coming up. There are new stuff that you need to focus on. There is the iPhone, there is the iPad, and there is technology, there is astronomy, which is all these things that religion has spoken about. All these things where the basis and the fundamentals, as I will show you and share with you, were established, discovered, invented by those who were religious. Those who were attached to the religion that made them excel and prosper. Because they understood that the purpose in this life is not just to invent and discover and die. They understood that there is a reward for such things. If I can produce something beneficial to you, in addition to monetarily, in addition to fame, I will be pleasing my Creator. And that is the principle in this world, to benefit the world. To worship your name, but at the same time, you don't forget that you have an obligation towards mankind. Towards mankind. And as one of the, one of the uh, thinkers, the Arab thinkers, as he said, Muslim thinkers, he said, إِنْ لَمْ تَزِدْ عَلَى الدُّنْيَا فَأَنْتَ زِيَادَةٌ عَلَيْهَا If you cannot contribute to the world, then you're nothing but extra addition on the world. Nah? You're just on the margin, you know? When you're, you're on the margin, you never study and you never look at. That is what people who cannot contribute. So, and he's a thinker who's a religious thinker. So the point is that religion doesn't tell you all you need to do is just sit in a place of worship, huh, in a pulpit, and forget about the world. And we have some Islam where the messenger, peace be upon him, was told, has told about some group of people in the village that they were so disobedient to God. And they found the messengers, and they found the message. So God ordered the angels to destroy them, destroy that village. So the angel said to God, but there is a righteous man amongst them. Someone who is in his home always worshipping you, always pleasing you, always. He said, God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, with him you start. With him you start. Yani the strike. You strike him first because he has failed to fulfill his duties toward his community. He failed to fulfill his duty toward the people around him. He thought that as long as I'm okay, then I don't care what happens to the rest of the world. And that is against the mentality of Islam. Other religions, they can speak for themselves. But my religion, Islam, that is the mentality. If you look in a verse in the Quran that says, Ya ayyuhal, ya ayyuhal ladina kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are the best community about the Muslims brought forth to mankind. Now God did not leave it like that. So we do not, as Muslims, we do not come and say we are the best community because God said we are the best community. There is a conditional here. This is a conditional statement. Huh? You are the best community produced for mankind. So first, to be the best you have to be a community. To be the best, you have to contribute to mankind. Then he says, تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You join good, and you forbid evil, and you believe in Allah. So it's not absolute preference just because you're Muslim. If you fail to do these things, then the problem is worse. 
Anyway, this is like a little introduction, just shifting, uh, going back to the, to the topic. Today I want to show that religion is not against science, especially Islam. Yes, there are religions that completely disconnect with science, even they fight science, and history is, is, is clear and has evidence on that, and the church, the Catholic Church, uh, has demonstrated that in the Middle Ages, and we know the wars and the crusaders in the Muslim world, we know that Tatar and the Mughals, when they attacked the East, uh, coming from uh, all the way to the East, the Far East, and they attacked the Muslim world, they both did the same thing, and that was burning books. They burned books. The Crusades in the Middle Ages burned books, burned libraries. Yeah, and when, they, when they invaded the Syria area, there is a, a library, Tarablus. Uh, 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 they burned three million books. Three million books. Look, in the Middle Ages you have a library that has three million books in the Muslim world. And that was a baby, if I could use the term, baby library compared to the library in Baghdad. Baghdad. At, that mo at that point, Baghdad was the largest city in the world. Three million people. You're talking about thousand. Huh? thousand. They were three million people. When the Mughals attacked and conquered Baghdad, they wanted to go from one side of the river of Dijla to the other side. They were very barbaric, the Mughals, okay? They had no advancement, they had no science, they had nothing. Their mission in life to spread havoc. That's what they did. They'll come to a town that is so advanced. And what they will do, yani they came to a town, all they did after they raped and after they killed and after they, they, they stole and after this and after that, they burned the city. The other city there was protected by a dam, they destroyed the dam so it drowned. So people after a while, they used to come pass by and say, in the past there was a city here. That's what they did. And that's what they did with the library of Baghdad. Huh? If the library of Tripoli or Tarablus had three million books, and it's a baby branch of the capital library Baghdad, what they used to get from one side of the river to the other side, they brought the books in the library, the books, and they dumped them in the river. So the army can walk over the books to the other side, and they did. They did. Look how much knowledge. And this is not, people think, oh, that's only religious knowledge. It's not only religious knowledge. These libraries had sections. Huh? These libraries had medical sections, huh? they had plants sections, animal sections, religious and theology. That's what they did. The river water changed color to black. The ink. Muslims didn't do that. The colonial, the, the recent colonialism, the recent European crusades when they conquered the, Muslim, the East and the Muslim world huh, in the last century, they were smarter. They stole the books. There is more historical Arabic liter literature written by Muslims. Huh? Manuscripts, original. There are more of those in European libraries than in the Muslim world. Now a Muslim researcher, when he wants to write a book, take it from manuscript, transfer it into a book, most of the time, either he has to, to go and travel to Europe, to Madrid, to, to Paris, to Rome, to get access to those manuscripts. And now, with technology, he can order it. Over the net, they'll send him copies. More, and take it from me, more Muslim and Arabic manuscripts in the West than in the Muslim world. That's what they did. They were smarter and they developed. But always Muslim scientists had the religious flavor. Yani, a lot of scientists of the, yani in the West uh, in the last century 
a lot of them completely disconnected from the Creator, from religion. A lot of them turn into atheists. I was majoring in chemistry here, and I never forget this. When one night I was studying for an exam, and I was in the chemistry department in the hallway, I don't know what, ch what happened to the department now, if it still exists. I remember one of my professors passed by, and I was reading a book. It was the night of the test, but I was reading a book, Science and Islam. So he looked at the cover. He said, you still reading this stuff? That's what he said. Like you're supposedly, you're, you're a scientist. And he's telling me, in other words, and you read religion? I really didn't know what to answer. I didn't answer. Maybe I didn't want to argue with him because I needed the A. I don't know. <laughs> but that's the reality. In Islam, usually, the more you learn, about science, the closer you get to your Lord, because you know such thing is impossible to happen by coincidence. It's got, got, got to be a design. There got to be a designer. That's the bottom line. Things don't come out of the blue, as they say. They don't come for no reason or, or no plans. Especially this sophisticated uh, universe, sophisticated human body, sophisticated cell, sophisticated embryology. It's impossible. So the more you learn, that's why these scientists, when they did not separate between religion and material, between huh, religious and spirituality and material world, they were able to excel. Now if you look in the past few hundred years, Muslims had no cont very limited contribution. Maybe someone would argue. They are big contributions, but very, yeah, very compared to the rest of the world, there's nothing. And compared to their eras, the golden eras. And I believe the reason of that is because they went away from their religion. They went away from their religion. Islamic history is a clear proof that when you're religious, you excel. When you're religious, you excel. When you have the taqwa of Allah and the God's fearing in front of you and in front of your eyes, you excel. Because you feel you are being trusted. I'm religious, I present myself as someone who is closer to God. I feel I'm representing the religion. So I have to excel in my endeavors. Whether huh, worldly endeavors or hereafter endeavors. And that is what I call for every Muslim and especially a lot of you are students. You are as a Muslim required to excel. The Prophet ﷺ teaches us, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ إِذَا عَمِلَ أَحَدُكُمْ عَمَلًا أَنْ يُتْقِنَهُ Allah loves that when one of you does something to perfect it. Perfection. You, you fall short, that's fine, you're excused. But you try. But to tell me, you, I'll be okay with the sea. No, a Muslim doesn't think like that. And when you see your ancestors, you will say, with all due respect, yeah. you know, some classes, a C is like an A+. Plus. Huh? But never be, yeah. never, never aim always for the top. If you fall short a little, you might end up with a B. Okay? Maybe A-. minus. They still have A- minus and all this stuff here? You guys still torturing these kids? You know? <laughs> so the bottom line is, you excel. When you see what your ancestors have done, and this is, yeah, these Muslims are our ancestors, the Muslims, they were Muslims, but I feel they are the ancestors of mankind. They are our history. We, mankind, share history. Okay, share history being humans. So let's see what they did when they were limited, but they were connected with spiritual world, and they were connected with, with their Lord. So let's start with this journey. First, I divided this lecture into two parts. The first part, I will talk about science being addressed in the Quran and in the Islamic tradition. The hadith, which is the reports uh, from the messenger, peace be upon him. Uh, first part covers fact, uh, scientific facts, fa facts huh? in the Quran, in the holy book of the Muslims and in the tradition of the messengers, the sayings of the messengers. The second part, I will talk about how this influenced the Muslims. 
how this how this ayat influenced the Muslim to be a scientist, to be a scientist, and to excel in his world. At the same time, without compromising his hereafter, without compromising the hereafter eternity. Yeah, we do believe in eternity, and we be, we do believe that after you die, you're gonna come back, right? We have we 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 went to colleges, we went to universities. We have degrees, huh? we went to very good schools, but yes, we believe that after you die, you're going to wake up one day for resurrection. We believe that. Prove otherwise. Okay? So don't be shy to say that. And again, that is the war on religion in the secular world. It's not only I said the West, that's where it came from, but that is also now penetrating in, in other cultures and in the Muslim world without any exceptions. Okay. Changed? Okay. This is just uh, the very first uh, verse. We believe that uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to, uh, to be alone in, in a cave before the revelation came down to him. The very when the angel, the arch uh, angel uh, Gabriel, Jibreel alayhi salam, came down with the first verses in the Quran. The very, the Quran is about 600 pages, okay? The very first verse was revealed. The very first time Muhammad, peace be upon him, the prophet heard from Gabriel was read. 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 The very first verse revealed in the Quran is read. Some Muslims and some people say, reading is not my hobby, it's not my thing. In Islam, reading isn't a hobby. In Islam, reading is an obligation. Because of this verse. Any order in the Quran that comes in the, in the command form, any verb in the command form, indicates obligation unless there is another proof that takes it from being obligated to being recommended. If you do it, it's good. If you don't do it, no problem. So here this command, read, there is no other, huh? no other qarina as they call it, no other evidence that says reading is recommended only, not obligatory. Even though this verse was revealed to a man who was illiterate. Prophet Muhammad could not read or write. Okay? But this is read to him and to his people after him. So you as a Muslim need to read, need to learn. An advice I give you from uh, a heart that had to deal with this uh, uh, problems and wish if years can come back. And that is when I used to be a student here, all I read was the required text. I only read for class, for school. And I know that I didn't need to consume four years plus just to read huh, academic books. I really wish that these years can come back so I can take advantage of the extra time that I used to have so I used to read the book again, to read other stuff. But a lot of wishes don't come true. So my advice to you, if you're still a student, take advantage of the time. I believe you don't have to study 24-7 for organic chemistry, or for statistics, or for calculus. You can get away studying way less than that. You will still have a lot of time to study other stuff, to read other stuff outside. That's what will keep you doing, what will keep you going. Thanks God, alhamdulillah, I discovered that when I was in dental school. Okay? So I didn't read, I didn't spend too much time reading about how to do a root canal and how to do a filling and all that. Okay? I just did it. I read as much as I needed huh, to do well, and I did well, but at the same time I was able to manage to learn something else. And I believe if you can do that in graduate level, you can do that in undergrad. So just focus and try to, 
to do more than just the, uh, the classes. Some people have three and six credits and they, that's all they do in the library. Very dedicated, studious. You don't need all that time. People different levels I understand, but bring something else on the table. That's what keep life going. That's what make it interesting. Okay? So that's an advice. I always give it wherever I go. So as you see the first verse read, and if you look at it also talking about the creation of man. Science. اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم The very first verse and the very first few verses revealed read huh? in the name of your Lord who created who created man from a cloud of blood and we'll talk about the creation so here the very first ayah revealed the very first verse revealed in the Quran is science that's to show you that the concerns that religion, especially Islam, dedicate for science and for worldly knowledge. But needs to be taken for the right reason. The other thing, seeking knowledge is obligatory to each Muslim. And also the Prophet uh, said the world is cursed and what is, not, what is in it is cursed as you have read on the screen. So we start with the Big Bang. Yeah. Okay, we start big. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Have not those who disbelieve known that the heavens and the earth were joined together? Okay? That's in the Quran. 1400 years ago, the Quran was revealed. 1400 years ago. Okay? Have they not seen that they were together? Of course they didn't see. If this thing happened millions of years ago, they didn't see. But the point is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving a huh, piece of information here. That the heavens and the earth were together. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huh, parted them. And that is a scientific fact. That is a fact. Today is accepted as a fact that the heavens and the earth, the earth and the world, the sun as they say, the heavens and the earth were one piece, split. That's in the Quran, right there. In very clear letters. I have a lot of those, so we need to rush. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then he rose over uh, towards the heaven when it was smoke smoke. If you read the, the NASA in 1989, and they, it says, uh, see, looking from the, the, the earth and the effect of clouds and pollutants in the lower layer of the earth's atmosphere, 10 light years away from the earth, the satellite seeing smoke. Smoke. And they're saying it's the remnant of the Big Bang. When the, when the earth, as they say, the created by the Big Bang and all that. Now we, someone will say, but you said that nothing comes from coincidence. How are you talking about Big Bang? First we're talking about the Big Bang as something that is planned and ordered by God. Look at it this way. Okay? Of course we don't agree with everything with the Big Bang. But whatever agrees, because all this, at the end of the day, it's uh, theories. If they try to prove it, they cannot be 100% sure, we are sure. If it agrees with what's in the Quran, we're sure. This word, this Quran, 1400 years ago, revealed, still the same. No tampering, no change, still the same Quran. You find in America is the same one you find in Libya. Even though he tried to create his own book, uh, the Libyan, the green book he calls it. Uh, he wants to rule the, the country with this book. Huh? But still, the people read Quran, they don't read the Green Book. Actually, one of the first things they destroy, a big monument for the Green Book. The same one in China. The Chinese Muslim read the same Quran. In Pakistan, non-Arab speaking country, every year there's 3,000 kids graduate from Madrasa. Of course, now madrasa, don't say madrasa in America, that's a problem. Obama went to a madrasa, 
Remember in the elections? Madrasa is a school. The very first schools, students go to the teacher to learn. 3,000 kids graduate every year in Pakistan alone after finishing memorizing the Quran. Memorizing. 600 pages. They're six and seven years old, memorize the Quran at that age. That's how God preserved His book. The Quran is not written at the time of the Prophet in a book and people start inheriting book, the same book years after years, generation. La. The Quran was inherited in the hearts of the people. There are people today who carry a chain. What is a chain? Called Senate. What's that? That is a chain that the student, huh? the student, recite, memorize the Quran from the teacher. Then he recited back in him or to him. The teacher did the same thing with his teacher. And the teacher did the same thing with his teacher. All the way, a chain of connection all the way to the messenger, to the prophet. Peace be upon him. All the way to the prophet. That is how Islam was preserved. The Quran was preserved. That's how the tradition of the messenger was preserved. It wasn't preserved in books only. It was preserved in the hearts of the people. So that's why we believe the book we have between our hands is the same exact book that Gabriel came down to reveal to Muhammad from God. And anyone who says otherwise needs to show the proof. Come on. Okay? Very important. We challenge on that. Whereas a lot of other religions, there is annual changes, term changes to their books. We don't do that. We don't have that right. We don't have the right. You don't find in Islam where uh, religious scholars used to sell pieces of heavens to the people. You don't find that in Islam. Islam always encourages people to think and reflect. You're not to be driven blindly. When they tell you do this, you ask, why? Show me. Where does it say that? We don't follow blindly. That's what the Quran teaches us. As they want to make us, yeah, make the worst or make us look like. We don't do that. Every time someone going to tell me to do something because God said that, I ask, show me. Prove to me. And the ayat and the verses in the Quran, read, reflect, ponder. Huh? These are verses are so abundant in the Quran, encouraging a human being to use his mind, to use his intuition, to think. That's why these facts in the Quran, for you to think, as well as it's a miraculous to prove that, that this Quran is, it did not, didn't, was not written by Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was illiterate as we said. So obviously he couldn't read, he couldn't read or he couldn't write. There was a treaty he did with the, with the people of Mecca, with Quraysh, al Hudaybiyah. And when he wrote, when they agreed, and the, the scriber was writing, this is what Prophet Muhammad agreed with, and the name of the other person. He said, if I, the other person, the disbeliever, who did not believe in him, said, if I think you're a prophet, I would follow you, I won't fight you. Erase the prophet. So the scriber who was Muslim, could not, how can I erase the prophet? There is a prophet. So the prophet told him, where does it say prophet? Show me, where does it say on the paper that's a prophet? In the leather, in the wood. So when the scribe, Ali ibn Abi Talib showed him the word, he erased it himself. He couldn't read or write. Proof. He did not come up with these things. So here, that's another thing. Allah says, and we have built the heavens with our own hands, and verily, it's we who are steadily expanding it. It's a fact today that the universe is expanding. These two pictures for galaxies, huh? uh, at one, that's, galaxies move, not, some people think like it takes millions of years for, for this expansion. This takes seconds. And the galaxies move miles in seconds, in a matter of seconds. So here, a picture depicted, and later on, you see the same galaxies are far away from each other. 
and it's a fact that the universe is expanding. That's mentioned in the Quran. Steadily expanding it. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, it's he who, he me referring to God, he who stretches out the earth. Okay? Utah Geological Research Centers says, the ranges and basins have been forming for the past 10 to 20 million years. And I love when I read 10 to 20 million, as if 10 million years is like a small thing. 10 to 20 million. But it's all yeah, assumptions. Years in response to east-west stretching. The same exact word. Stretching. The same word used in the verse 1400 years ago. The big crunch or the destruction and annihilation of our cosmos. I'm sorry, but it's going to come to an end. Okay? Allah says, And remember the day when we shall roll up the heavens like a scroll rolled up for books. As we began the first creation, we shall repeat it. Okay? You can read the code down there. And that is the reality. In other words, the universe cannot keep expanding. It's going to reach a limit, and after that, it's going to start shrinking. And that's what the verse says, and that's what science says. <clears throat> we move to the mountains. Have we not made the earth as a bed, and the mountains as pegs? Okay, this is in the Quran, and mentioned uh, more than in, one, in, one, in more than one occasion, okay, as the ayat below. The bottom line or the point you need to pay attention, of course we see, we see mountains, but the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the mountains as pegs, usually a tent has a peg in the middle to hold it in place. The mountains move, the, the earth moves. So to keep it stable, as a tradition of the Prophet ﷺ on the bottom, when Allah created the earth, its surface started to move and shake, and then Allah stabilized it by mountains. Mountains. Look at the uh, image here. You can see a mountain uh, on, uh, on the surface of the earth, or the ocean as you see the line there. That mountain has, if I could say, a mirror image buried in the ground. Okay? A mountain is not only a cone that you see. Okay? Mountain is on top and on the bottom, the same thing, inside the ground. And that's what stabilizes continents and stabilizes the earth from moving and shaking. That is a geological fact in the Quran, as we said. And mountains as pegs. Of course, they use the terms in geology today for these pegs, roots. Mountain roots. Okay? But it's more accurate to call it pegs. Just how God called it. Because that's what the uh, function of a peg. To keep something stable. The peg of a tent. Okay? If you know what a tent is. Okay. Here's another fact. And you will see the mountains and think them solid. But they shall pass away as the passing away of the clouds. The work of Allah. Who perfected all things. Mountains move one centimeter per year when the plates move. Okay? That's another fact. Mountains aren't stable because earth is in continuous motion, stretching. So mountains move along with it. That is uh, in the Quran. Let's talk about oceans. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, or the unbeliever state is like uh, when someone is unbelieving or is disbelieving, rejecting all these signs of God, is like the darkness in a deep sea. It's covered by waves, above which are waves, above which are clouds. Clouds, we all know the clouds. But Allah says in this, in this verse, the ocean, huh? the, the, yani the heart of the disbeliever, so dark, just like the darkness in the ocean, the waves, over it waves, over these waves, other layers of waves. But obviously, to be able to see that, that's deep, deep in the ocean. First, they, could not, they didn't have submarines to go down and see that it's too dark. 
But the fact that today is the surface waves that we see on the surface of the ocean. When you see waves, huh? when you go to the beach, you see waves. There is another layer of waves underneath. Okay, and that is what the, uh, the picture shows. Internal waves. So you have the top ones, the external, the internal. So that is where the ayah says, covered by waves, above which are waves. That is science. That is the Quran talks about these things. These things to reflect. Okay? These things to believe. Let's talk about the rain. Have you not seen how God makes the clouds move gently? Then joins them together. Then makes them into a stack. And then you see the rain comes out of it. So this is the process how rain is made. If you look at it, you have, if you look in the sky, when the clouds are scattered, there is no rain. Huh? It's sunny. When rain happens, you start seeing the clouds coming together. Someone will say, if we could see it today, they could see it then. But how could they see what's happening up there after they come together? So the term that the clouds move gently, huh? have you seen a cloud running? Usually move slowly until they join. Then Allah says, they didn't jump to say, huh? they didn't straight go say, and rain comes when the clouds come together. That's what we see when clouds come together. That's what we teach little kids. When clouds come together, it rains. But Allah has different steps in between. So first they move gently, then they join. That's how clouds join. This is the most primitive uh, image, but it's what I found. Okay? I didn't make it up. That's how clouds start joining. Then they start stacking. You see in the B, that is growing stage, that's stacking. They start stacking over each other. And then that's when you start having all these charges and all these negative and plus and party in there. And that's when it rains. Alright? <clears throat> Oceans. A lot of you go to the, to the beach. You never think about this because the, the other beach is too far. Allah says, He has set free the two seas meeting together. Now pay attention to two seas. There is a barrier between them. They do not transgress. The Mediterranean and the Atlantic Ocean, two seas. And as you see, they join huh, in Morocco. That's when the Mediterranean Sea, the water comes into the, the Atlantic. But if you look, the fact is, the water of the uh, uh, Atlantic doesn't mix with the other water because their dense, the density is different. Their density is different. So as you see with this image, okay, now these images are not drawn by Muslims. <laughs> these images from books written by non-Muslims. This is science. And, and we will post this presentation on the website. So anyone who wants to take any piece of information and verify it, more than welcome. So the water doesn't mix because of the different density, salinity, all these uh, characters of water. And Allah says, there is a barrier between them. Do not mix. There's a barrier. They don't mix. The two waters don't mix. Now. Now remember, I said those are two seas. Two seas. But is there a difference when a river water joins the sea water? You know, the river water is sweet water. The sea water, if you ever tasted it, you were thirsty and you drank salt or sea water, it's salty. And you don't want to drink water from the Dead Sea. Because I did. I drowned in the Dead Sea that no one ever drowned in. The water is so heavy that you don't drown, but I drowned. Hasbi Allah. Alright? But I was rescued. And I drowned in the beach, on, right on the shore. Uh, <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talks about the sweet water joining the uh, salty water, it's different. He doesn't only say barrier. He says, one who has set free the two kinds of water, one sweet and palatable, and the other salty and bitter. And he has made between them a barrier and a forbidden partition. So in addition, there is a barrier. They don't write mix together. There is a partition. If you look at uh, estuary, that's when sweet water meets uh, fresh water with the rivers, meets the salty water with the sea. The water goes into, start changing density. To the point where the sweet water, now, uh, I guess, um, I don't really remember, but I think by osmosis and all that, the equilibrium, the water wants to be stable. Huh? So start little by little losing or getting more dense until it reaches, the sweet water reaches the density of the sea water. That region, of course I can't show you where, what I'm pointing, but that region as you see the three different uh, rectangles, that is a partition. It's not just one line which is a barrier, huh? it's a partition, there's thickness there. Then the water becomes diluted or becomes salty huh? until it reaches the same dense. Okay, it becomes dense until it reaches. So there is a difference in description. When Allah talked about the two seas, He said only a barrier. When he talked about the sweet water and the uh, salty water, he said a partition in addition to the barrier. And that is what science had shown. There is a difference. Let's talk about fossils. Allah says, they say, what when we are bones and crumbles or crumbled dust, will we then be raised up as a new creation? The disbelievers come to the Prophet, tells him, you say people are going to come back, going to be resurrected? Yeah. So are you saying after we die and we're buried and we turn into dust, we're going to come back? He said, yes. But look what Allah says to tell his messenger to answer them. He said, say, and the, Allah telling the Prophet, tell them, answer them, it would not matter if you were rock or iron or indeed any created thing that you think is horror still. Doesn't matter if you're gonna be rocks or iron. Time. We all know what fossils are. Now not everything dies becomes fossil lines. It has very uh, rigorous uh, conditions have to be available for something to be fossil line. That's why you don't find too many people fossil. But as you see, petrification is when the uh, living uh, or the, the, the creatures turn into stone. Iron is found in fossils. Because after all these years, everything in the world wants to be iron. Because iron is a very, very stable atom. For those who study chemistry. Everything, and yeah, science said, everything wants to become iron. And because of the pressure, because of the environment, because of whatever, things, that the fossils contain iron. Because all molecules want to become iron. So there is no surprise that Allah says, it would not matter. Huh? If you're hijara or hadid, if you're rocks or iron, we're going to bring you back, even if you're anything. The way we were created you or we created you the first time, we can bring you back the second time. It's easier. But the, cho the, the, the choice of words, iron or rocks, significant. Significant. And you, I'm sure you all read that and you're not even listening to what I'm saying. Okay. Now, let's talk about water. It says we made from water. Well, they not then believe. Ibn Kathir, one of the uh, commentators on the Quran, he said, the meaning of this verse 
the blue. What is the or, uh, means that water is the origin of all living things. Okay, that's what the ayah says. We made everything living from water. Abu Huraira, one of the companions radiallahu anhum, said, O Messenger of Allah, when I see you, I feel happiness and contentment inside me. Tell me about everything. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, everything has been made from water. Read the bottom and see how much there, or what the, the period of time between water and the first, huh, the creation, plants and animals and all. Millions of millions of years. So obviously the origin is water. Some will say, we're not sure about that. All right, let's see. Human body is 71% water. Adult, 90, an adult stage. Ad uh, embryos, 93% water. 80% of human blood is water. More than 90% in the bodies of large number of plants and animals. Nutrition, excretion, growth, reproduction, swallowing, digesting, transporting, and distributing food, vitamins, hormones, all these things. Photosynthesis, all these things cannot work without water. Photo, photosynthesis, photosynthesis can't work without water. If you ask me, do I remember biology 101? I don't. But I remember water was involved. I'm sure if there were no plants, we're dead. I'm not a vegetarian, someone might say. Dude, plants are not only to eat. Where, where are you going to find animals anyway to eat if there are no plants? What are they going to eat? You? <laughs> you know? Oxygen, carbon dioxide, all these things. So very important to understand when Allah says everything living from water. And the word living is also an indication. It doesn't say everything, it said everything, every living thing. All right. Let's talk about uh, kingdom animalia, the spider. Allah says the likeness of those who take false deities, yeah, they worship other than God. Awliya, they take them as friends and helpers other than God. Is the likeness of a spider who builds for itself a house. But verily, the frailest of houses is the spider's house. If they but knew. If they would know. Someone will say, all right. Obviously, there were spiders at the time of Muhammad. He saw a spider web. He went, and that's the, way the house was gone. So what's the big deal that the weakest house is the house of the, of the spider? I, first, naming. This, the, the verse is called Surah Al-Ankabut. Al-Ankabut is a singular form for spider in Arab. The Quran was revealed in Arabic. These translations of the meanings that all these verses I show you. There are other animals mentioned in the Quran, surahs and chapters called after that, but they're not called in the singular. For example, the ants, plural. The bees, plural. Nahl, in naml. They didn't say an nahla or an namla. But when talked about the ankabut, huh, they didn't say. Anakib or Ankabutat. It didn't say that, it said singular. And we know for sure that the female spider is so independent. Actually, is so vicious. Okay? So if one day you fight with your husband and he tells you you're an Ankabut, you're a spider, that's very bad. <laughs> <laughs> that is why it's in the singular form. Ankabut, the name of the chapter. They didn't say spiders, it's a spider. Okay? Also, female spider is the, primarily the one that weaves the web. In the ayah, in this verse of the chapter, now this is not a whole chapter, this is just a verse in a chapter. It says in the Arabic, of course in English, there is no uh, spider, she spider and he spider. It's going to translate into spider. 
But in Arabic, وَإِنَّ أَوْهَنَ الْبُيُوتِ لَبَيْتِ الْعَنْكَبُوتِ Okay, but when Allah talks about weaving the, the spider web or the house, Allah used the feminine, in Arabic there is feminine and there is masculine. Allah uses the feminine term for spider. Huh? اتخذت. اتخذت. The spider, to, she took. The, the verb اتخذت refers to a female. اتخذ refers to a male. But اتخذت, that sound t at the end, that is a feminine. To indicate that the verb was done by a female. So in the verse, it was used the female term. So the one in the verse, it says, the one who builds the house, the female. Science proof. Now, don't go to your wife and say, why you want me to help in the house? Yeah. The male spider helps the husband. Okay? He helps, but not too much. Actually, if you look at the life of the spiders, I think she's using him. <laughs> Serious. Abusing him. Okay? Now we look at this. The web uh, silk threads are very uh, minute, very thin. Actually, uh, I think one over 4,000, I think, I'm not sure. One over 4,000 of a hair, human hair. That's how thick the uh, silk, the threads. But similar thickness of a steel, the web or the, the silk, huh, the thread of a silk, is 3,000 times stronger than the same thickness of steel. All right? Can I? Let's try. Okay. The, the spider web, the, the, the thread, okay, that you see in the background, I'm not sure of the number. I remember it's one of 4,000 of a human hair. Could be more. But if you take the same thickness of a steel, yeah, and you take a steel thread with the same thickness as a silk thread produced by a spider, she, then the spider thread is 3,000 times stronger than the steel thread. And I'm not repeating that again. <laughs> All right? Strong. Okay. Evler is, is the material, it's petroleum material. That's what they make. Uh, it come, it's, it's derivative from the silk. And it's bulletproof vest made out of it. That's one. Very strong. Bonus. Dysfunctional family. The spider family is so dysfunctional. First, as I said, the father is abused. Actually, he's only used for mating huh? and helping in building the wood, just helping. Then after, huh? uh, and for hatching, I think. After that, he's done. Some spiders, as you know, kills them. Don't do that. It's illegal. But some spiders, females, end up killing the male. When the small, uh, what they call, spiderlings, when the small spiders, the baby spiders, come out, it becomes crowded. So they start fighting. They start fighting, the babies, the brothers and sisters start fighting. Most probably, I think the sisters will win. But they start fighting because it's limited space. And usually, dysfunctional people, that's what they do. They make places crowded. They start fighting to make more space until they kill each other. And whoever survives, huh, made it. They feed on the dead brothers and sisters. Okay? So, بَأْسُهُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ شَدِيدٌ They're always, uh, there's too much hate and grudge and between them. That's why it's the weakest house, if you want to take it from that angle. Forget about the physical strength. 
but from functional strength it's also weak. Such family is called dysfunctional family. And then each one goes on their own and they start the cycle again and again. She finds a guy, he finds a girl. All right. Creation of man. <clears throat> you guys like spiders, huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this verse here, I don't have to read, you can read it, talks about the creation of man. Embryology. This, these embryology steps only discovered in, in the 1950s, okay, in the last century. But it's very important to pay attention to this. Now if you look, I, I, I uh, colored the, some words thereafter, then, 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 then. There's a reason. They both serve the function and then. Thereafter means then. That's what they teach us in writing. But in Arabic, thereafter, the word used, thumma, which means then. The word used for then, that translated differently, is fa. Fa also means then. Huh? But the difference between thumma and fa is thumma, it happens but takes a while. Fa, it happens then but in very short period, right away. Alright? So let's see why these different uh, proposition, if you call them, were used. Extract of clay. I don't. I have no idea why these arrows shifted. Okay, but extract of clay to a sperm drop because we believe we came from dirt. For a sperm drop, from sperm drop to a zygote, huh? and then the other phases of embry embryo. God used thumma. which is then, but there is a time. And it then is, it is going to take some time. But when he talked from clot, to a chewed morsel, to bones, to flesh, he used fa, the conjunction fa, which means then, but immediately. It didn't take too long of a period to go from one step to the other. Previously, it took long to go from clay to sperm. It takes too long to go from sperm to zygote. And then the next step, which is the clot. Let's see. Then God, in the other verse, when he talks about clothing uh, the bones with flesh, and then to another creation, which is the human, the completion of a human being, thumma again. Thumma is then, but it takes a time. Usually, at this stage, when bone and flesh, flesh as the skin, the, the muscles form over the bone. After that, the baby is seven months, okay? Uh, the next seven months is forming into the shape that they have when they come out. Thumma was used for that, not fa. We said thumma is then, but over a long period of time. Let's see. Quran divides the process of creation of humans into five phases. Okay? First, the nutfa. This is the verse I started with. The nutfa, which is sperm drop of, or zaygit phase. Allah calls it nutfa. Lasts for almost one week from the date of fertilization. That was fa. That's how long it lasts in that stage called Mutfa. The next stage, the clot, which we will talk about the meaning of the word. Uh, but at this point, this uh, uh, blastula, as you go, they call it, attaches to the uterus, the wall of the uterus. Attaches and starts sucking blood for nutrition. Now in the past, huh, before science, they used to believe that human beings are formed from the uh, uh, menstruation blood. Because when a woman gets pregnant, no more periods. So they thought the blood forms this. But obviously the Quran said no. Okay? So here you see that, the clot. That's two or two, three weeks. Then Allah says, the next step is the uh, mudra, chewed up morsel. That's the exact translation of the terms used in the Quran. Starts approximately on the 26 days after fertilization. 
If you read the somites are these, uh, uh, if you see the backbone, these segments are called the uh, somites. Then the bones creation and covering with flesh. That's fourth week of the eighth week. Okay, the most active process of this phase reaches its climax by the end of sixth week, 42nd day, when the bone starts to develop. It's hard. Or hard. Okay. Now remember these numbers. Okay. By the end of the eighth week, the embryo's length reaches 30 millimeters. The skeleton becomes fully developed and covered with flesh. The internal organs are almost developed. Embryo undergoes the fetus phase that starts at the beginning of the eighth week and ends with the delivery process. That's when the term thumma was used. The longest phase during pregnancy, which is the seven month development. The conjunction thumma was used. But with the other phases, huh? The nutfa, the clot, the mudra, all that was fa, fa, fa. Because it was a short period of time, a week, two weeks, a huh? few weeks. But the last phase was used, thumma. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, this is this hadith for 1400 years ago. When 42 nights pass by the nutfa, or sperm drop, that sperm that is uh, in the uh, womb now, Allah sends an angel and gives the embryo the shape. Then he creates his sense of hearing, sense of sight, his bones, his flesh, his skins, and then says, My Lord, will he be male or female? The angels will ask. And your Lord decides as he desires, and the angel then puts down that horse. After 42 days. It's worth mentioning that the gonads were found to develop at the fifth week and during this indistinguishable indistingu stage, an embryo has the potential to develop into either a male or female. The gonad do not begin to attain sexual characteristic until the seventh week, 42 days. That's what the hadith said. Allah Messenger said, as the ayah, uh, the matter of the creation of a human being is put together in the womb of the mother in 40 days. And then he becomes a clot for a similar period. Uh, this is hadith, the Prophet, the Messenger said. And then a piece of flesh for a similar period. Then Allah sends an angel who decides these things. And so you see, critical number of days were mentioned. That's a challenge. Why someone like, if, if Prophet Muhammad came and made up his, this religion, why would he put challenges like that? If I come with, a, with an idea, with, a, with the ideology, with the thought, with whatever, and I want people to follow, I'll make sure that the stuff I say will not be contradicted later on. These are challenges for people who are going to come later and later. And all these things are discovered as science discovered, and all these things discovered recent, in the last century. Yeah, you find Greeks writing about this stuff, but they don't write these details. There was no experimentation then. So let's talk about specific terms. The nutfa, which is the first stage, the sperm, uh, linguistically in Arabic, it means little water that ranges from one drop to a few drops. Nutfa, that's the term used. That's a picture of a nutfa, a microscopic. Looks like a drop of water. Alaqa, that's the next step. Okay? Alaqa has many meanings. One of the meanings is the uh, warm leech. The top image is at this stage. The embryo, look what it looks like. The bottom is the leech. Muhammad couldn't see that, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because I will, because you see, how you we can see it. These are magnified, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like in the womb. You see, B. That is nutf. That is alaqa. Also, another meaning for the word alaqa in the Arabic language is suspended thing. Suspended. Look at the picture of the alaqa in the womb. Don't you see how it's suspended from the wall? 
where B is. Add to that, what does B do? It's like blood. Usually at this stage, the alaqa or the, uh, is attached to the wall to suck blood for nutrition. Exactly, yani the word used is critical. The mudra, mudra linguistically means chewed. At this stage, the embryo looks like this. The bottom is chewed gum. Someone will say, that's not how I chew my gum. Well, <laughs> but the fact is, the terms that are used are so critical. And these things could not be seen with uh, bare eyes. That's the meaning of mudra was used in the verse. Then the stage of bones. Then the stage of clothing the bones with muscles and flesh. Then the stage development of growth. Oh, okay. All right. Allah says he creates you. That's now we finish with the creation. He creates you creation after creation in three veils of darkness. That's in Zoom. Three veils of darkness. Time. The fetus is surrounded inside the uterus by several membranes, from the inner to the outer membrane, amion, chorion, and deciduum. The placenta has these three walls. This placenta is within the womb. Okay? The walls of the uterus. The wall of the uterus is in the body, in the abdomen, surrounded by the front, uh, the abdomen, and the, uh, the back. So here, not only the placenta is three layers, and Allah says in three veils of darkness, but also the layer, the placenta, then the womb, and then the body. Three darknesses. The heart. I'll go through very quick through heart. 132 times mentioned. In the Quran it stated the heart is not only to pump blood. The heart is a place of reflection, is a place of memory, is a place of thinking, is a place of making decisions in addition to the brain. Okay? So when people in love, they think with their hearts. Don't they say that? Don't think with your heart. Think with your brain. Hearts think. Think. All right? And all these yeah, information I mentioned, scientifically, cases proved. How they studied that, one of the yeah, main ways to study that is through heart transplants. They saw that uh, traits and characteristics transfer, not all the time, but a lot of the times when the person receives the, 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 the donor's heart, he started gaining some of the characteristics of that dead person who donated his heart. Some memories. I read a story where this woman talking about her, her brother. And she said when he, after he was very strict uh, father. Huh? No alcohol, no drugs, no going out late, no this, no that. He got heart transplant, he became alcoholic. These are, yeah, these are cases. And that's book Paul Purcell. He wrote book, he, he interviewed people who had heart transplants, okay? And that is what he concluded. The Quran uh, talks about these things, that the heart plays for feelings, reasonings, decisions. Now, by no means we're saying that the brain doesn't think, doesn't make decisions, huh? No. But we are saying the heart affects, heart has a role. The heart has a role in these decisions, okay? That's what the Quran shows, as I said, in over 132 verses. This Claire Sylvia case, I think uh, Russell mentioned in his book, this woman received a heart. In her dream, she found out the name of the donor. She was never told the donor's name. But in her dream, she found the name of the, she dreamed of the name of the, okay? So that is a big case you can read about. The heart, the Quran describes some of the functions, huh? 
and some of the characteristics of different hearts. Hard and soft, perfect and perfect, arrogant, considerate, repenting, conceited, knowing, ignorant, open, sealed, good, evil, believe all this comparison between hearts in the Quran. Okay? Hearts is important. Every man has 360 joint bones. The Prophet ﷺ said everyone has been created with 360 joints. Whoever mentions Allah, greatness, praise Allah, exalt Him, all that. To pay the sadaqah or the charity on each bone. God bless you with bones, bless you with joints. You have to pay Him for that. So when you say Allahu Akbar, you say La ilaha illallah, praise be to Allah. That is charity for each, for a joint. So that is the indication of that, of that hadith. That, uh, 147 joints in the vertebral column, 24 joints in the thorax, 86 joints in the upper extremity, 92 in lower extremities, 11 in the pelvis, total 360. Okay. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said the earth would consume every part of the son of Adam except for one bone. Huh? The coccyx bone. The prophet didn't use this term, but he was referring to man will be resurrected from. Some researcher, scientists tried to destroy this piece. They couldn't. Allah says, and we brought down iron wherein is mighty power. Like you can use iron for mighty stuff, as well as many benefits for mankind. One third of the earth is iron. The mass of the earth, one third is iron. That is 6,000 million, million, million tons. Very close to uh, the budget deficit. Okay? <laughs> 6,000 million trillion tons. No. How iron formed? Iron needs a lot of energy to form. Billions of degrees. It's impossible for iron to form on earth. There is no enough energy for iron's molecules to form. You know the changes in protons and neutrons and all that makes new substances. And as we said before, everything wants to be iron. So stars when they start in the, in the uh, out galaxies and all that, when they start burning because they die, but they burn themselves so much into nova and supernovas. They burn so much, they produce a lot of energy that at the end, they turn into a stable iron. The verse used says, we brought down iron. We sent down iron. Anzalna. Anzalna means to bring down. Which is a clear evidence that iron wasn't made on earth. Okay? Because there is no, if one third of the earth is iron, it's impossible that it was made here. It got to have come from somewhere else. And that is what the verse says. Anzal, we brought down. It doesn't say we created, it doesn't say we have it in there. We send it down. From where? That is a fact. 1400 years ago. I, I give you bonus for iron, and this is not going. Okay. Uh, iron, the uh, atomic weight is 56. The atomic number is 26. The chapter number, there is a chapter in the Quran called the iron. The chapter number is 57, which is an isotope of iron. You guys know what isotopes and all that. Same number of protons, different number of neutrons. And you forget on the exam day. All right. The chapter number is 57. The basmala, bismillah. If you count that as an ayah, then the number of the verse is 26, which is the atomic number for iron. Tell me that's coincidence, please. All right. Something to reflect. Allah says in the Quran, let's move away from little science. Allah, I mean different science. 
Allah says the Romans have been defeated in the lowest part of the earth, but after defeat they will soon be victorious. This verse was revealed first before it happened. The Romans, as you know, the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire were ruling the world. They were always fighting over pieces of land here and there. So they were defeated. The Muslims felt bad. Why? Because the Romans were Christians. They were following the Bible. And we Muslims more connected to those who follow the Bible and the Torah than those who worship fire as the Persians were. They were pagans. The disbelievers in Mecca were pagans too. So the disbelievers got excited and happy that the Persians won. Because they can say now, if your God was with them because their book come from him too, then why they lost? The Muslims got upset. So God said, revealed, that they will, they will meet again and the Romans will defeat them. In some years, between three and nine. And it happened eight or nine years later. But the point here, is it says in the lowest part of the earth it's agreed that the battle took place in Jordan in the Dead Sea area the Dead Sea area is the lowest spot on earth without arguing the lowest spot on earth huh, is the Dead Sea okay Allah says in the lowest part of the earth that's where they were sent. The Roman Empire, the Persian in Iran. And they were always trying to gain the Middle East, as everyone wants these days too. Allah says, The hour has drawn near and the moon has been cleft asunder. Yani split. Tarabat al when shaq al qamar. Shaq, split. The disbelievers came to the messenger and they said, Show us a miracle. The prophets before you came with miracles. Show us a miracle. Split the moon. Of course, he cannot do it on his own. He asked God, so God split the moon. They were able to see it, and a mountain in Mecca was in between the two pieces. So it was not a visual effect or illusion. So they said, it's magic. They told him it's magic. After they saw the moon split into two pieces, a mountain in between them to prove that they're split, few days later, when travelers who were in the middle of the desert reached Mecca, they went to them and they asked them, Did you see something strange a few nights ago? They said, Yeah, we saw the moon splitting. Usually visual effect or magic only affect the people around you. It doesn't affect people two, two countries away or two days away. The new pictures of the moon shows there is a line that goes circumferentially all around the moon. Just like this, you see. And Dr. Muhammad Hassan here uh, can tell you more about this. But the fact is, there is talk now that the moon did split. And this line indicates that. Call NASA. The Quran said it. All right. I'm almost done. Numbers. So now we're going to finish with the science. Just some numbers in the Quran. 600 pages. Huh? Revealed at different instances over 23 years. So here. Seven heavens in the Quran mentioned seven times. The creation of heavens mentioned seven times as well. Day is repeated in the Quran 365 times. Go read. Count. Days. Now day in singular form 365. Days in the Quran, in Arabic there is a plural and there is dual. Okay? So there's a term for two, and there's a term for three and up. In English only singular and plural. Two people are plural. In Arabic, no, there's one, there's singular, dual, and plural. The dual and the plural in the Quran is mentioned 30 times. Number of days in a month. Okay? Month in the Quran mentioned 30, 12 times. Plant and tree is the same, 26 times. Dunya, which is the world we live in. Akhira, which is the hereafter. Mentioned the same number of times. Satan, yes, we believe in Satan, is used in the Quran 88 times. Angels use the same thing. 
Word faith and word infidelity mentioned the same number of times. Paradise and hell mentioned the same number of times. Reward and action the same time. You want to get an A, you study. That's reward and action. Love and obedience mentioned the same time, the same number of times. Is one of the fundamentals of obedience, of ibadah, of worship. If you don't love, I don't care. You don't obey. The word man, huh? equality, huh? they t talk about Muslims and Muslims mistreat their wives and their women and all that. We're tired of that talk. They are the ones who uh, take care of their women. They're very nice to their women. Okay, just read billboards. The words man and woman mention the same number. 23 times. Man is mentioned 23 times, woman mentioned 23 times. Who's taking biology? How many chromosomes from the man? 23. How many chromosomes from the woman? 23. 46 in total. The same number mentioned in the Quran for each one. Well, that's just a conclusion. Numbers. Soil, Torah, 17. Drop of sperm, nutfa. Now you all know what that means. 12. Alaqa, 6. Half formed lump of flesh, mudra, the true thing, 3. Bone, 15. Flesh, 12. Total, 65. These are the stages that a human being goes through to be formed. The number they're mentioned in the Quran, the total is the same number of a human being mentioned in the Quran. Cool. One more numbers. When my wife saw this, she said, no, it should be number. I said, I leave it numbers. Okay? I'm going to act like a she spider now. In the Quran, the word land appears 13 times. The word sea appears 30 times, 32 times. 13 over the total times 100% gives you the percentage. So the percentage of land is 28.8. That is almost one third. The percentage of earth, of sea, is 32 over the total, is 71%. That is the exactly ratio between land, solid land, and water, ocean. Okay? Okay? All right. All right. Now I'm going to just very quickly, I'm going to, this is in the Quran. So you can see there is concentration and focus on science. Islam doesn't tell us be ignorant. Huh? Islam doesn't tell us go and blow people up. It doesn't. As I already started with, Islam says you spread justice. Islam says you bring prosperity. Islam says you help people. Islam says you contribute to the world. That's what it says. So when the Muslims read those, verses and they understood their religion they understood they have to contribute so let's see what they did just an example the european europe during this era okay now at the in the middle ages okay europeans didn't have any civilization okay actually when muslims went into spain that's when the europeans learned how to shower they used to shower once a year. Huh? The holy shower. They learned how to shower from the Muslims. And read that. Muslim, the, as I said, the Crusades, when they invaded the Muslim world, they burned the books. They didn't want knowledge. They didn't want science. Huh? One French uh, thinker, I forgot his name, but he said, I wish if Paris was to be occupied by the Arabs. He's referring to the Muslims in Andalus, in Spain. And the other said, Europe in these ages, in this age, in the Middle Ages, Europe cannot be even a neighborhood in the Muslim world when they saw what happened in Spain. Go and see what Muslims did in, in Muslim Spain and Muslim Portugal. The Muslims reached 70 miles away from Paris. Muslims built. Usually when people conquer, they destroyed. Muslims built buildings and fountains and palaces and libraries and this and that. When they built the library in Al-Andalus, in thing in Al-Hamra, 
the king of England sends to the Muslim Khalifa in, in Spain. He tells him, he's asking the permission if he can send a few British English men to study in the light. And then at the end he signs, huh? he signs what? Your servant, the king of England. That's what Muslims did. They built. And they're still standing, their buildings and their history is still standing strong in Spain. But for people who live, the Muslims I know who live in Spain, they say the most, of course maybe some people here will disagree, but they said they lived there and they lived here. But there, the racism against Muslims is unbelievable. Maybe some Spanish people here who's from Spain might agree, disagree. Maybe you're a good guy, you disagree. But the point is, maybe you're open-minded. But he said, we suffer too much compared to here. You guys see nothing. But that's what the Muslims did. We built, when they, when they uh, conquered the Muslims and they kicked them out, they destroyed. And we all know about the Spanish Inquisitions and what they did to the Muslims. You believe, you leave your religion or you killed or you are deported. That's what they did. Go read. Read about that period. Islam doesn't tell us. We don't force people into religion. It doesn't work. The heart, we talk about the heart, is a place of faith. How can you force a heart to believe? Maybe you can force a physical, but the heart, how can you force? You don't have access to it. Very important. The Europeans, that's what they did. Uh, when Bruno talked about the, the circular or the, the, the earth is, is uh, rounded, they burned him. Public square. You know why they burned him? Copernicus, the same thing. They shooted him, they, they didn't kill him, but they stopped him. Why? Those people said that the earth is like a dot in the universe. We are. So if people start believing this, that means the concept that God died for us on earth, it's a dot in this big universe. It's not worth it. That means God, God gonna waste his time to die for a small piece, a small dot on this world, in this universe. He won't do that. So that's why the church found them, found scientists. Scientists were executed in, mid, uh, in, in uh, medieval uh, Europe because of this, because they cannot make people think. They don't want people to think. That's why they keep pushing it, they keep selling whatever they want. We don't believe in that. In Islam, we don't believe in that. You don't go anywhere, you don't go any mosque where you have to pay admission or for a seating, there is no seating in the mosque. Everyone sits on the floor. Doctor, engineer, cab driver, all due respect to all professions, all sit. Whoever comes first, sits first. You don't have to have uh, membership in the masjid. We don't use the deen to, or the religion to make profits. It's not allowed. But that's what they did. And we don't say, this is what the Christianity is calling for. This is what manipulated, uh, changed, tampered with religion. That's what they did. There are people in, in Islam who do that. But not to that level. There's a story I read where the church, as you know, used to sell pieces of heaven. You go, you want a piece of heaven on the beach or you want it here or there. That's the price. You pay, you get a contract, that's it. Now you get the title. So the story said that a Jewish man, very intelligent, went to the church and said, sell me hell. He bought the hellfire. Obviously no one wants to go there. Then he made a big announcement. He said, no one should buy any more pieces of heavens because hell belongs to me and I'm not letting anyone in. If you don't go to hell, you have to end up in heaven, so they have to take you. To the point where the church was forced to buy back the hell for a higher price. They're good with business. 
But that's, that's the mind of people. In, Mid -ages, Euro, in Middle Ages Europe, huh, when Muslims were building libraries and Baghdad library and palaces and all that, huh, and Muslims, as you will see, were discovering, Middle Ages Europe, the emirs or the princes and the kings used to, to own the land. So if one prince wants to sell a piece of land, he will sell the piece of land with the people living in it. So they become, next day they become the property of the next guy. That's how they did. And let's not talk about how women were treated in the Middle Ages. The same time when Prophet Muhammad came and the religion started how women have rights and they have the right to choose. Women in, in pre-Islamic era, in the, in the Arab world, huh? now are there women abused in the Muslim world? Sure. No one denies that. But don't say it's because of the religion. Actually because they have gone away from the religion. That's why they abuse their women. But to tell me that they are the only, you find the American government so concerned, our government so concerned about an abused Saudi girl in Riyadh. You have thousands and thousands of women, American women abused every single day. As they said, I'm a dentist. I see women come into my office. I saw them out the door. They had all their teeth. Today they walk with missing two teeth in the front. What happened? My boyfriend punched me. Two days later, she comes with the boyfriend, huh? Because his tooth is hurting. She didn't punch him. But what it, what it is, she's still abusing her. Obviously, no action was taken. When you see billboards on the streets, you're driving and billboards. And so it's amazing how these billboards are planted in specific regions. I don't see those billboards in Aventura. The billboard. You're not sure that uh, it's your son, that's to a guy. You're not sure it's your son, then this test will tell you if the guy you've been raising is your child. DNA testing for the guy, now you can do it at home. $40. CVS. <laughs> Why? Why you're not sure of your child? The other billboard. You're pregnant, don't worry about it. We'll take care of you, don't be stressed. How are you solving a problem here? I have patients, kids, 12 years old, pregnant in my clinic. I have 15 years old already with two children, different ages. We're in twins, 15 years old. Most probably she cannot take care of herself yet. I have patients, huh? I hope no one from uh, HIPAA here. I have patients with five kids, everyone with different last name. She is 22. That is not a healthy society. We got problems in here that we are so worried about the girl in Riyadh. Let them deal with their own problems. Well, your buddy buddy with the, the leaders. So it's important to, to see the hypocrisy in politics. May Allah protect us from politics. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so that's what's happening in Europe. That's when you go away, when you try to manipulate. The, 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 in the Middle Ages, Europe was so strong that the, the Pope, he was the, 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 the ruler. Don't worry about kings and princes, it's the Pope work. When they wanted to start, just give you an example, when they started the Crusades, huh, missions toward the Middle East, the King of England didn't like the Pope much. The King of England, of Germany, the King of Germany. So the Pope of course sent to the kings and all that, we want help. So the King of Germany said no. So the Pope issued a fatwa, Islamic verdict. He said, the king of Germany will never enter heaven. The Pope. For us Muslims, no one has that right to say that. Only God. The German king didn't care, but his advisor told him, people are gonna, gonna go against you. Because people are also so numb with the, with the Pope and the church. Your people are gonna revolt. A few days and they're gonna kill you. You better repent. You know what he did? 
the Pope in Rome, the King of Germany in Germany, he walked barefooted from Germany to Rome. When he reached the church, three days raining, and the Pope would not open for him. For three days, he's standing under the rain until the Pope opened and he went and he kissed his hand or his foot or whatever and then he forgave him that's here that's the dark ages you hear dark ages that's the dark ages so let's see what Muslims were doing at that time optics Hassan ibn al-Haytham okay let's read Kitab al-Manadir that's a book he, he wrote main reference in this science until the 17th century in Europe uh, he specifically described the state of light's ray refraction. When the light hit water, some of it re reflect, some of it refract, some of it goes from different densities. He talked about that. Experiments. Uh, Ptolemy claimed that the way we see things is because there is light uh, coming out of our eyes and we're able to see things. He proved that this is wrong. The light is reflected from things toward our eye. That's why we see these things. It's easy to prove that. If you're in a dark room, you can't see anything. If there was light coming out of your eyes, you will be able to see. Okay? But he proved that what was believed to be, that it's not the case. He showed that vision happens when rays are reflected off the object, which is light comes from the object. Huh? Not necessarily uh, intrinsic, it's reflected. Uh, he also uh, see, say, if we have two eyes, why we don't have double vision? When we look at things, why we don't see, why I don't see you twice? Because each eye. So he proved uh, that these images, your, my eye sees two images, but in the retina, inside of my head, in the, in the socket, it gets joined together. Okay? And actually that put the foundation for stereoscope. Who knows what stereoscope? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. I think you study too much biology, man. Okay. Study some physics. Stereoscope is 3D imaging. The 3Ds. Huh? When you see it, today they tell you, 3D, uh, buy a TV, 3D, go to a movie, 3Ds. That's what it is. The glasses you wear are put different, uh, whatever different, uh, there's a term, I don't know what that is. But different calibration, let's say. So when you see things, the way when they reach the retina, they reach late. So you start seeing things more in depth. Okay? More in depth. That's what the stereoscope is. Okay? So, 3D's TV, huh? all that come from this. Him saying that we see things because they join, they get matched, the images and the retina. That's why we don't see, we don't have double vision, even though we have double, double eyes. Okay? The last thing I read was about uh, uh, 3D's TVs that sometimes they lead to uh, suicide. So, don't buy them. Okay. They do. How? I don't know. Uh, the study of the eye. He dissected the eye. Okay? Because, if you think about it, going back to 3D, analytical, huh? I did take analytical chemistry. Uh, your retina is used to see one thing matched. So now you're, you're manipulating, you're altering with the nature of the retina. That's what happens. Every time we alter nature, we suffer. When they started to feed, huh, to make cows, cows, fat, they fed them meat. We ended up with crazy cows. That's what it is. Whenever you go against nature, against the creation of Allah, against the design, you suffer. Whenever you think you can outsmart the system, you suffer. So he dissected, that's why I think, uh, he dissected the eye, literally, and he gave it names which are still used today. You never see this in books, in curriculum. 
even in Wikipedia. You never see these things. The Qarniya, Cornea. Qarniya is an Arabic word, means horn. Qarniya, you know Qarniya is like very thick, very thin layer, translucent layer covers the eyeball. Why would they call it horn? We know the animal's horn is so hard. Actually, if you take it out and you try to cut it, you suffer. It's very difficult to cut. It's very fragile, but very strong, very uh, tenacious. So they call, he called it Al-Qaraniya, which is referring to a horn, the animal's horn, a bull horn or what, what, anything. Then other retina, Shabakiya. Uh, shabakiya, what's a Shabaka in Arabic? What does that mean, Shabaka? Net. What's retina? Retina is Latin for net. Net, huh? the net, the fishing net, that's called net. In Arabic it's called Shabaka, Shabakiya. Translated, we study, there is retina. Retina is Latin for net. Same exact translation of his word. Isail Zujaj, the virtuous humor, literal translation of the Arabic. Aqueous humor, Sail al Mal, literal translation. He dissected the eye. With this, you know. Uh, first, suggest using camera obscure. All these cameras we have, he, 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 he suggested, he came up with the dark room. Huh? In the dark room you have a box, you put a candle, we study all that in physics. Uh, if the candle is in the focal point or far, remember we had to draw in the exam, something upside down. And then when he tells you why it's not upside down, you just flip the page, the paper, the exam paper, you tell him here, it's upside down. Okay? That's what it is. He talked about it. He talked that, that images will be uh, inverted. Okay? Camera obscure. He talked about that. He preceded Leonardo da Vinci, de la Porta, 500 years before them. Now, we don't hear his name when we talk about optics. We hear their names. Look, he wrote his book, Al Manadir, in 400 Hijri, in 1021. 1021. That is two, that's 1,000 years ago. 2011, 990 9, years ago. Giving you dissection of the eye. Chemistry. Well Durant, uh, historian, non-Muslim. Chemistry as a science was almost created by the Muslims. Khalas in which the Greeks confined themselves to artificial experiences and mysterious assumptions. Someone will say, the Greek had chemistry. If you look at the Greek intention of chemistry was one thing. Who knows? To convert anything into gold. <laughs> That's what it was. The Greek had, had chemistry for this reason. How I can turn anything into gold? But science, chemistry, uh, molecules, chem chemicals, compounds. We talked about that way, 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 way long ago. And lo that's what he's writing. Especially experimentation. Uh, Muslims came up with this idea, the experiment. If you want chemistry, you have to work. As Ibn Hayyan said, Rahimullah, he said, one of the great scientists of chemistry, he said, you have to work and you have to experiment. That's it. Effort and experimentation. And if you're working in a lab, you know you have to have effort. And experimenting. That's how you prove facts. Nitric acid, sulfuric acid, hydrocyanic acid, silver nitrate, mercury chloride, mercury oxide, potassium. All these made, prepared, discovered huh, by Muslims. Okay? Alkalines. You read, the first thing you study in chemistry, general chemistry one, alkalines, Arabic word. Okay? Jabir bin Hayyan. You see, they all have beards. It's not a bad thing to have a beard, after all. But they were connected with the religion. The way they have scientific writings, they wrote in religion. They were philosophers, they were thinkers, huh? They were dedicated to their religion. So he, he did all these experiments. The founder of experimental chemistry. 
he did evaporation, distillation, crystal. He used all these chemical ways or, or uh, uh, methods to discover things. He discovered the silver ammonium ion. First, to prepare sulfuric acid, mercury oxide, nitric acid. He was the first to prepare hydrochloric acid. Look, he lived in 700, born in 700 to 800. In Wikipedia, if you put hydrochloric acid, HCl and water, it will say it first prepared during the Renaissance. Renaissance between 14th and 17th century. 14th century to 700, that's 700 years. Isn't that plagiarism? Serious. Yeah, and it's sickening to the guts. 700 years, the man, and his book is preserved. And you tell me, one of the biggest references these days for, for people, that it was prepared huh, in 1400. Why? The first discovered caustic soda. All these things. We still with jab it. He had a sensitive balance. He can weight one over a hundredth of a pound. A balance. Okay? Exactly. I told you we made everything living from water. That's water? Or Sprite? All right, so he, had, he, he was waiting at, he was waiting chemicals. One over a hundred sensitive balance at that time in 700, 1300 years ago, that's unheard of. Uh, Lebon says in his compilation, a scientific encyclopedia is made from the work of Java. This encyclopedia contains the best of what the Arabic or historians uh, uh, non-Muslim historians, usually they refer to Muslims as Arab. But not all Muslims are Arab and not all Arabs are Muslims. Alhamdulillah. Uh, most Muslims aren't Arab. Compounds that were completely unknown before him. By the one. Not Muslim. He wrote 306 books. Someone writes 306 books? We have uh, ENC 101, a paper for 10 pages. We suffer. 306 books in chemistry? Okay, this thing is sticking out. Where is uh, Ahmed? Why is this thing sticking out? <laughs> he made this uh, slide for me. Gave him the information, he put it together. Zahrawi, talk about medicine. First one to introduce the science of surgical scopes. In 400 Hijri, that's almost a thousand. A thousand years ago, he used the scopes. You know what he did? What surgery he did? He destroyed a gold bladder stone with a scope. Don't ask me how he, what kind of scope. With a scope, something you could see. All right, thousand years ago. He has book, uh, Tasrif, is regarded as an integrated medical encyclopedia for surgery in Europe. Until the century. Look some of his work. These are medical instruments. He drew them in his books. More than over 200 instruments. The fundamental, the foundations of instruments in medicine, based on these things. Huh? I think this looks like uh, what? Orga uh, organologist, teller, uh, organologist, like people, uh, specialist in instruments, musical instruments, and all that. All European surgeons who appeared after the 14th century relied on this science, the science of Zahrawi. Spokes. Copy of that. In color too. <laughs> All right. They actually, Jabir bin Hayyan discovered the dyes huh, into glass and all that. 
that permanent dyes. He discovered that. That's another translation of his book. <coughs> Very quick. Uh, Avicenna, Ibn Sina. Huh? Look when he lived, 428 after Hijr. That's also about a thousand. Okay. Hookworm. How can you see a hookworm without microscope? He talked about the first to differentiate between paralysis uh, caused by internal reasons than external reasons. First to describe the stroke caused by more blood. Uh, before the Greeks and all that, they talked about the strokes by uh, outside evil forces, all that. He's talking more blood. That's what a stroke is. Uh, one of your blood vessels explodes. Blood. He talked. He said this caused by more blood. Okay. Differentiate between intestinal colic and renal colic. Uh, in his own words, water contains microorganisms that cannot be seen by the naked eye, which cause some diseases. If you look, these words are very simple words, not so complicated, but that is what it is. Way before uh, uh, discovery of the microscope. Way before, he's talking about microorganisms causing diseases like smallpox and measles. These his books. These are written. These are not. These are are documented. Okay. So he talks about parasites, thousand years before microscope. Nah. Got to have strong eyes, strong cornea. All right. So we can see that. Uh, he removed the tumor. Okay. Cutting larynx, trachea, removal of abscesses from lung, membrane, surgery, surgery. Described urinary fistula, cooling anal fistula, still the same uh, principle used today. Uh, was well versed in dentistry. They didn't teach me anything about Abyssinia in dental school. Look what he says, the principle of dentistry. You don't want to see the dentist? Listen to his advice. The main purpose of treating tooth decay is through seasoning. But really the treatment for tooth decay is prevention. He's noticed the basic principle for treating prevention. You know what that means? Brush. He's talking about that. He's talking about fillings. How you seize the cavity is saying you clean it, that you're going to have a hole now because you removed it. Then you have to replace what you took for the tooth to keep functioning. If you clean a cavity and you leave it open, you're going to be sensitive, huh? as dentists say, uh, to sell you treatment. Uh, you're going to get the decay easy because the first layer of the tooth is very strong, enamel. Most cavities happen in the dent. They start with enamel. They make very small hole, very tiny. That's why you look at your teeth. I got perfect teeth. You go to the dentist, he takes a couple of x-rays. You need a couple of root canals. Because you really don't see the cavity. Sometimes when it's so bad underneath, no more dentin for the bacteria to eat, they start eating the enamel. That's when you start having a half tooth in your mouth. But usually the cavity penetrates very tiny hole in the enamel, and then the dentin is very soft. I can scrape dent uh, with with hand instrument. So the ca the ca the bacteria spread so fast in the dent. You look at the tooth, it's so good. And one day you come to the dent, you say, I don't know, I was eating uh, uh, bagels and my tooth fracked. Was, was it didn't have any problem because it was inside all around. So if you clean, you have to replace. You leave it uncovered. It's only exposing dentin. That will cause problems. So that's what he's talking about. If you look at this, uh, uh, this is uh, Tajikistan. He's from Tajikistan, not Arabs. Okay, Tajikistan in Russia. Like old, uh, one of the old uh, USSR states, the Soviet Union. His picture on, the, on their money. So money, 20 so money. I don't know how much that is worth. But they honor their scholars, their scientists. Razi, all of you know Razi. The invention of a suture which he constructed from, he constructed should be two words, from cat guts. Today, 
Most probably if he says, I did that, they're going to accuse him of animal abuse. Okay? But for science, it's okay. Cat got sutures. When he lived, 800. That's about 11 or 1200 years ago. Let me show you this picture from my office. Ready? <laughs> Sutures, cat gut. Look at the date on it. 2000 expires 2011. Who wants a tooth out? I need to use it before 2012. <laughs> That's, that is the best suture. Now they have from silk, and you remember we talked about silk? But the good thing about this, I like it, is resorbable. The patient doesn't have to come back for me to remove it. A few days later, it's gone, and it's already healing. He discovered it 1,200 years ago. No one can deny that, but they will never say that. What's the problem? I don't know. Uh, invention of mercury ointment. Venous and arterial hemorrhages. He differentiate, because the way you treat them is different. Uh, cataract extraction, use of opium, uh, introduction of laxatives, thank you. Considering fever as a symptom, not a disease. Fevers are symptoms, not a disease. And that's what it is. Okay? Fever, it's not a disease. There is a problem underneath. In the West, they treat symptoms. They don't treat diseases. That's the problem. That's why people are sick. 90% of patients I see over 30 have to check either high blood pressure or diabetes or both. No exception. Why? It's like the kid, when his father, gra when he, he graduated from medical school, he took over his father's practice. Huh? So then the very first patient he sees is a man complaining, a patient, his father's patient for years, 10 years, and he's complaining and a noise he hears in his ear. So that the child, he just graduated, excited, he discovers, oh, look, look, diagnose. That's the problem. He gives him medicine, he's treated. His father been treating for 10 years. So when he went back to his father, he told him, Dad, 10 years you didn't figure out what his problem is. very straightforward. He said, son, he paid for your medical school. <laughs> That's a reality. Huh? The ethical in, in the medical field is unbelievable. The things we see, All right. Him, uh, Razi, we're still with him. He avoided the use of chemical drugs. If there was a chance to use something alternative, osteopathic medicine. Okay? The process by which he chose the location to build a grant. He was commanded by the Khalifa to build a hospital in Baghdad. So he wanted to know which location to show you his genius, how genius he is. So he picked 10 minutes. Okay, I still have 300 uh, slides. He, decided, he took five spot, uh, four spots. He picked four spots. And he got a piece of meat and he put it in each spot. And he monitored. The meat that stayed good, the longest, that's where he built his hospital. That means this area will be the best place. That means the air is clean, less uh, bacteria, less that, less that. That will be the best for the patients. So he picked that spot to be the place of the, of the hospital. First people to build hospitals in history are the Muslims. The difference between the first hospital in Islam, in the Muslim world, in Cairo, and the first hospital in Europe, 900 years. And the first hospital in Europe, they will put four and five people in the same bed. The pregnant woman, the guy who got stabbed, the guy who got infection, in the same bed. 
In Muslim hospitals, it was specialization. Sections, specialized, people with infection are here. They were actually hospitals for specific diseases, like leprosy, contagious. So we're going to put the, make a, new, a, a hospital for them. Today, the, vent, the venting and the AC, huh? they bring you a disease, you're, sitting, you're going for your arm broken, huh? you live with TB. Come on, because the AC system. Anyway, but that, they, they figured that out. Okay? He taught his students medicine in three years. You know, like when you graduate, they give you the... I graduated a long time ago, so I forgot what the, the gown and the... The who? The cap? The hassle? The hassle? Nah, the cap. <laughs> when they used to graduate from, Muslim, from Islamic universities, we built the first... They used to wear, as you know, the Arabs wear, the soap. That's what they dress you. But they didn't tell you. When you graduate, they dress you like Muslims. <laughs> and the turban. <laughs> That's what it is. We got the first universities, we got the first graduates. A thobe and a turban. Did you order a gown that is pants, come with pants? <laughs> it's a thobe. So this, yeah, I need dress. Uh, oh, a man wearing a dress, yeah. <laughs> I hear that. Okay? So he, he, he had medical school three years. Like, I mean, inshallah, I was a good guy. Instead of four years undergrad, four years uh, grad, then residency. He said three years. If you're good, you're good. If you're bad, you're not going to make <laughs> That's what. <laughs> Serious. Why should I go major in, uh, in, in English literature? Huh? If I want to be surgeon. But they put you through that. For this, like you study chemistry and biology if you want to be a doctor or dentist or medical field. 95% you'll never use. Lower. But it's very good. Knowledge is important. So he had his medical school was three years. Three years, okay? As you can see. After three years, he gave two exams. One exam, theoretical, written test. Huh? He asked. If you pass that, you'll take the second test. If you don't, huh? I don't think you're worth treating patients. Because the second test, I, I, test I'm going to see you on the field. I want to see how you treat patients. That's what he did. That is the principles. That's what we do in colleges and universities. I mean, I don't know if I should thank him for that or not. But. <laughs> All right. Uh, his book, uh, uh, By Westerners, A Complete Medical Encyclopedia, translated into many languages. His book is Encyclopedia. Al-Hawi. Al-Hawi means the uh, encompassing of medicine. Everything he experienced wrote in there. 25 volumes. Okay? 25 volumes. By the year 1500, there were five editions of his book. That's good. He's remembered. Okay? Uh, this uh, picture you see on the side, that's in the uh, University of uh, Princeton University Chapel. Uh, the glass commemorating him. You can see his name on the bottom right. And he has a monumentum in University of Paris as well, medical school. Physics. The first to realize sounds are affected by bodies that cause them. All these things classify sounds into different types. Uh, reflection, material and weight of air. They didn't know that way air had weight. Theory of obliquity and inclination and the theory of impulse. Discovered the density of solid and liquid bodies. Invented a balance. That's Al Khazani. Uh, he said air and weight uh, have power. And uh, so all these things, the principles for air vacuum, pumps, barometer, laws of motion. Laws of motion, they say Newton discovered them. Well, I say otherwise. <clears throat> All what he did, he formulated into mathematical uh, equations. That's what he did, which is a great deal. But the principles of these laws, he did not come up with it. 
It wasn't the apple that gave him the, huh, the light to discover these things. <clears throat> Let's see. First law of motion. And Newton said, in the absence of force, a body either is at rest or moves in a straight line with constant speed. Avicenna, huh? 700 years before Newton's. You know, if the object is left unaffected by external influence, it remains as it is. That's a Newton, that's Avicenna, first law of motion. Same wording. Second law of motion, Newton said, a body experiencing a force, experiencing an acceleration, reflect, related to his mass, all these things. Hibatullah ibn Malaka al-Baghdadi said, the strongest power moves fast and takes a short time. The stronger the power, the faster the object. The stronger the force, the faster the object. And the shorter the time. If the power does not decrease, the speed does not decrease either. Huh? He also said the faster the speed, the stronger the force. The stronger the force the, uh, that pushes the object, the faster the acceleration. Same thing. I don't see any difference. Third law of motion. Newton said every action has a reaction, which is equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. Fakhreddin al-Razi, the circle pulled by two equal forces until it stops in the middle. It's taken for granted that each force has practiced an action that obstructs the other. Ibatul ibn al-Haytham said, the moving object is encountered by an obstruction, the opposite force. And if this force, if these forces remain, this moving object retreats in the opposite direction, reaction, by the first object and according to the power of obstruction. We have it. Algebra. Algebra science was invented by Al-Khawarizmi. No doubt about that. Huh? 1200 years ago. Let's go back. Khawarizmi. What's wrong with my fingers? Khawarizmi used the first to use word algebra. I know all of you love algebra because it's easy, but algebra is the basic for everything. Both algorithms and algorithm are derived from the Khawarizmi work. Actually, they're derived from his name. Al-Khawarizmi algorithm. That's where the word comes from. Algorithms comes from his name, Al-Khawarizmi. Unfortunately, even Muslims are so uh, ignorant of their history, that when they translate algorithms into Arabic, they translate it al-lugaritmat. Originally from Arabic, why you translate it, use the English word or the Latin? Translate it into or use the word al-khawarizmiyat, which is relating to khawarizm, algorithms. All right? So that's the, he's the one who put these things. Let's see what Muslims also invented in algebra. The zero. Maybe you look at zero and you don't like it. It's not major. No? no computer works without zero. Solving equations of second degrees. Huh? If you hate calculus and algebra, maybe you're cursing the khawarizm. Using the decimal fractions. Huh? Using of symbols, plus, minus. Solving equations of the third degree. Just to tell you, <coughs> the letters we use, in America, in the West, are Arabic numbers. The one, the two, the three that you use every day, those are the Arabic numbers. To tell you that there's a bigger problem, huh? first we don't know that, the Arabs don't use the, the Arabic numbers. They use the Indian numbers. And the Arabic numbers are designed based on numbers of angles. Okay. If you look at each, uh, each number has the number, uh, the uh, indicative number of angles uh, in the way you draw it. Three has three angles, two has two angles, one has, no, uh, has one angle, huh? one, okay? Zero has no angles, it's a circle. And on all the way to nine. How many angles ten has? All right. All right, geography, very quick. Muhyiddin ibn al-Rais, huh? al-Rais, al yani. uh, Born in 14, between 1400 and 1470. Read this statement, okay? This professor, he came, he said, based on bodies in Brazil, found huh, in Brazil, skeletons, 
He said, historical books wrongly attribute the discovery of America to Columbus. Muslim Arabs, in fact, discovered it scores of years earlier. Discovered the Southern Pole. You want to see his map, his drawings? What's that thing in the corner, on the left corner? Ah, Florida. Uh, his maps magnified, it shows that. Exactly. Actually, his maps go deeper. It talks about indigenous people. It talks about Indians. It talks about their festivals. He drawn them naked because of their celebrations, they get naked. Why? I don't know. But the point is, he wrote and he drew on these maps so many details. Because there is uh, uh, scrutiny here and there is argument that he copied Columbus maps. His maps have way more details than Columbus maps. He has names of towns, names of regions, names, names of rivers, huh? water, pit, everything on these maps. More, way more details than Columbus. Why this thing? No one, no one ever heard of this guy. Even if he, if he copied Columbus, obviously he reached what, where Columbus reached and he got more information and they were accurate. It's not the imagination. Why he's not uh, acknowledged? Look his map in 1400. There were no satellites. There was nowhere you can go up and look at the earth. Look at Italy. It's still the shoes. Okay? You know? Still exact look. Mediterranean Sea. Look at England. How did he reach England? Okay? Exact drawing. How? 1400 years ago. These are the maps of Rais. In his book, The Morning of the Blind, Al-Kal Kashandi says the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean are linked. Because they, they were saying they, there is no way they are linked, Atlantic and Indian. Such description showed that Muslim knew this fact before Vasco da Gama. Vasco da Gama, to go from the uh, Atlantic to the Indian, he went around the, uh, Africa. Okay? But the Muslims wrote that in their books way before Vasco de, Vasco de Gama. And actually there's a report, it, as you can read in the second one, that there was, the journey was taken before him. 27 years before him, but it, he went the other way. He went from the, around Africa, to, around the Cape, to, to, to Atlantic, to Morocco. Why all these things are not uh, acknowledged? Well, I tell you why. To count the Arab geograph at the Muslims and their publications, we will need volumes. Abu al-Fida mentioned 60 names of geographers who appeared before him. Due to the insistence of Europeans on their inherited hatred of Islam, senior and great Western geographers have denied the Muslim contribution to geography. It suffices to mention the contribution of Arabs, Muslims, which assured their importance. Arabs were the first to reach accurate astronomical knowledge, which was the first basis for maps. Gustav de Libon. Not a Muslim. That's why. I don't blame them. The Muslim got problems too for not knowing this. I finish with this. It's not supported. This computer doesn't have Arabic, so the words are uh, flipped around. Qasr uh, al-Hamra. This uh, fountain huh, in Middle Ages built in Spain and still there today in al-Hamra. Uh, if you look at the lions, they're 12. During the day, at the first hour, one lion will spit water. Start water coming out of him. At two, two lions. The next lion next to him, they both start spitting water. At three, three. At four, four. Until 12. It doesn't work now. You know why? Because when the Europeans kicked the Muslims out, they wanted to know how it works. So they dig underneath, they broke it. <laughs> Seriously, they broke it, they couldn't fix it. 
Okay? But that's how, how they're hanging ceilings built during those times. Hanging ceilings. Okay? They can't hold a, a dome ceiling in Minnesota. All right. The base. This is the uh, Jazari, uh, one of the uh, uh, engineers in mechanics and in uh, technology. This is not a human being in there. This is a statue. Huh? That's supposedly a servant holding water. He built that and there's a bird on top. I don't know where the head went, but there is a bird on the top. This bird will make and it will whistle at the time of the prayer. Muslims pray five times a day. So at each time of the prayer, he will whistle. And we know for, for you, when you pray, you need to make ablution, wudu. So he built this uh, robot for the Khalifa. So the Khalifa, when it's time for the prayer, the bird will uh, make a sound, make uh, or whistles. So the Khalifa comes, press something with his foot. So this uh, nice servant huh, will start pouring water for the Khalifa to make wudu. And then the water will get circulated and will get replaced from somewhere else. Robots. Okay. The elephant clock. There is a real elephant. Actually, I don't think this is real elephant. This whole thing is a clock. And that again, the bird will whistle every hour of the day. Then, yeah, I will finish. Okay. So this is very, uh, very little that I, I talked about. There are many other things that uh, Muslims, uh, they have contributed significantly, if not uh, invented the whole science, morality, theology and literature, politics, science, arts and beauty, pharmacology, geology, geometry, mechanics, all these things. We have discoveries after discoveries, inventions after inventions. And we, we, we are honestly, we talked about a fragment of the contribution of Muslims to science. And as you can see, a lot of science today, so much advanced, but the foundations is discovered and invented by Muslims. And that's the last uh, slide. It says shukran, which means thank you. Thank you very much for having me and I appreciate your uh, courtesy and listening. Thank you.